Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our vocabulary. Today is our day number 61, lesson number 61. Let's start with the first word there. This first word uh, may be very simple, very straightforward for, for a lot of native speakers. Uh, native speakers, but I'm um, you, you doing this first word so that I can take care of the other three words that are, that are coming up because they are all related. The word is a simile. Simile. Sim. O. Li. It's a noun. What is a simile? A simile is a figure of speech when you're comparing two things. Uh, which are dissimilar, which are which are uh, which have nothing to do with each other, and you're comparing them uh, by using the word like or uh, or 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 as. This is as uh, uh, something 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 for a figure of speech. A figure of speech in which. Dissimilar things are compared using using the word like or as. For example, uh, uh, somebody uh, somebody might say, "Well, he's as weak as water." as weak as water, those are two dissimilar objects, a person and, 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 and some water. And yet uh, we, we use that, uh, it's called a simile, where you're comparing two dissimilar objects by using the word as or like. She is dead as a dodo, and you might know if you, if you heard this expression. Dead as a dodo. She's dead as a dodo. Dodo, for those of you who do not know, is, an, is a bird. A dodo is a bird which no longer exists, is, is extinct. And because it is extinct, hence the expression, dead as a dodo. While you are at it, let's digress for a second. Just now I said, just now I said that dodo is a bird which no, longer, which, which no longer exists, no longer exists, three words. Instead of using three words, what I actually wanted to use was the word that I did not use and I hesitated. The word that I wanted to use was extent. What does it mean extent? Extent with an A in it. Extent, not E. If you do not know, if you do not know, you can just type in Kishwani prep dash vocab dash day 14 and you will learn this word extent, extent which is an antonym of extinct. Extinct means something no longer exists. Extent means something that does exist. We humans are extent. Dinosaurs are extinct. Extent. So what I, what I wanted to say is that dodo is a bird that is not extent. It is, it is an extinct bird. Hence the expression dead as a dodo. He is dead as a dodo. Man, when they find out what he did, he is dead as a dodo. There you go. Dead as a dodo. It's a simile where you compare two dissimilar objects by using the word is or, a, or as. Let's, let's, let's learn the next word which is related to the word simile and the word is similitude 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 or some people pronounce some people prefer to pronounce it as similitude what does it mean similitude similitude comes from the word simile which similar which simply means similarity If two things uh, have similarities, they have similitude. 
a replica of something, a copy of something, something that closely resembles something, something that closely resembles something else. If something that closely resembles something else, that thing is said to have similitude. They may not be exact same thing, but they do bear some similitude, some resemblance, some, some, some common features. Similitude. And from the word similitude, we're going to learn other word. So this word similitude is what, I, what, I, what we wanted to learn, but I did not want to cover this word similitude which is a good word. All of these words that we're learning actually obviously they are good words for the GRE, GMAT or SAT or to just know the words uh, for, 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 le for the learning sake. But particularly if you're going to sit for any of these exams, these are good words to learn. Because these are GRE words, these are SAT words, these are GMAT words. But I did not want to cover the word similitude without making you understand that the word similitude comes from the word simile. So if you know the word simile, which most people do, this is a very straightforward word, similitude, resemblance. And now we're going to progress to the next word. And if you understand the word similitude, the next word that we're going to learn is going to be easier to understand. So again, one more time, similitude comes from the word simile. And from similitude comes the next word that we're going to learn, which is very similitude. Verisimilitude, or again, one more time, just this, this one. That's a T. Verisimilitude, verisimilitude, or verisimilitude. Verisimilitude means exactly what it says. The prefix here, very, means truth. This prefix here, very, has to do with the word truth, which is where the word verify comes from. So, very similitude, similitude means similarity, very similitude means something that lends appearance of truth, something that has, something that has an appearance of being true or real or genuine. Since this is a noun, the good synonyms would be you understand the word plausible Something plausible is something that is likely, something that can happen. And from the word plausible, the noun would be plausibility. Plausibility and verisimilitude, they are synonyms. Another good synonym might be likelihood. Likelihood. So one more time, verisimilitude means uh, looking like truth, but not necessarily true. We do not know if it's true or not but it just looks like to you. For example, let me give you a simple example of uh, how, which, how you might use the word sim verisimilitude in the context. For example, uh, let's see if I can think of a good example here. I, I saw you yesterday, I saw you just a little while ago on the phone and uh, you pretend to cough and you, so you, you had a fake sneeze while you were talking on the phone. Why were you doing that? Oh, because I was, I was calling my boss this morning to tell him that uh, I'm sick today and I cannot go to work. And I was just making the sound of sneezing and coughing to lend, to lend verisimilitude to my story. To lend the appearance of truth to my story. Because I told him that I have a cold, my story uh, carries a little verisimilitude if I, at the same time I cough a little bit as I'm talking. You see? that coughing, that sneezing that the other person hears on the phone, it lends a very similitude to the story. It gives the appearance of truth. 
it makes it a little bit more plausible. It makes it a little bit more uh, likely that likely to be true. There are similarities to word. Why were you limping? As we as we saw that guy on the street. Why did you start limping all of a sudden? Uh, because uh, that's the guy I sued for getting hurt on the job. And as far as he's concerned, I, I hurt my knee, so I had to limp and never run around him to lend very similar to, to my story. That was a good example too. Let's move on to the next uh, next example, which has to do with very similar to it. It has to do with the prefix of very. So we learned about simile. From the simile, we moved on to similitude, and from similitude, we go to word very similitude. And now we're going to learn the next word, which has to do with this word. Well, it has to do with this word in the sense that it, it shares the same prefix of very. I need the room, so I need to raise it. The word that we want to learn next is veritable. Ver e to well, veritable. Make sure that you pronounce it correctly. It is not to be pronounced table, it's veritable. What, what does it mean, veritable? Again, you see, notice the prefix very, which means truth, truth, or being true. Verify. Has the same, has the same prefix. Very similar to it, has the same prefix. It just means to be true. Something that is veritable is something, something, that, it, that you know to be, that you know to be true, as opposed to something that has a very similitude. Something that has a very similitude means it appears to be true, it looks like true. Something that is veritable, we know it to be a fact, we know it to be true. Something that is authentic, something that is authentic, there is no doubt about it. Something that is real, something that is true, something that we know to be genuine, whereas over here it has the appearance of being genuine, it has the appearance of being true, it has the appearance of being the real thing, whereas something, something that is described as veritable is known in fact to be true. You, or you, you shouldn't listen to him. You can't uh, believe well, a word he says. You know, everybody knows he's a veritable liar. He's a veritable liar. <laughs> everybody knows it's a fact. He's a, or he's a, he's a veritable whatever you, can, you might say, uh, gambler or, or cheater, whatever you want to call it. Which means everybody knows that that, uh, that, that is a fact. That whatever it is that you're describing is a fact. There is no doubt about it. There is no there is no question about it. Something that is unquestionably true, something that is unquestionably true, is described as a as veritable. That was that was all I have for today. I will see you tomorrow on day number sixty two with some more new words, obviously. Until then, if you wish to get hold of me, you can send me an email from any of these website addresses that you see or from keshwaniprep.com. Alright, thanks.